Steve Baxter, thank you so very much for uh, chatting with us here at the Aussie Wire booth at the, uh, the Alliance for Responsible Citizenship launch in, uh, in London. As we get some water brought in, I've been doing many, many interviews back to back. Thank you so much. Uber. It's only water, um, is it? It's water. Excuse me, I'm going to take a sip. Well, the good stuff came out, Tofu. Uh, that's, uh, look, is it five o'clock yet? <laughs> uh, another, another hour and a half. Look, we're, we're, up, we're past the halfway point of day two. We've had enough of a sample now to really get a sense of what this ARC thing is. No one really knew coming into it. What brought you here, given the uncertainty, given that this has never happened before? Um, look, I, I think it's very hard to ignore the invitation you get when, um, you know, when uh, everyone has got the invitation here. It, it was an invite only thing. Sure. It's uh, somewhat, uh, I, I suppose, uh, you know, somewhat exclusive, which is not a reason to come in its own right. Mm. Um, I'm very much of the, of, the, of the opinion that we need uh, more confidence in telling our stories. Uh, a okay. large part of, uh, I think a large part of Western society uh, has lost confidence in itself and not telling our stories, not mm. understanding history, mm. uh, not having the courage to stand up against the noisy left, for want of a better term. That's getting to be a bit of a, a, yeah. a, a, a tribe. But, but we know kind of what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, we've just come through the, uh, uh, the voice, the, the horrible voice debate in Australia. Yeah. And um, one thing I learned in that, I think that if you're against the voice and weren't being called a Nazi or a white supremacist at least three times in a day, <laughs> you weren't being vocal enough. Yeah. So um, you, you need to learn that, that confidence, that capability. We've heard some great speakers who give you a lot more uh, intellectual ammunition mm -hmm. that you can use in these things, to mm -hmm. not only to fortify yourself, but also to fortify your arguments. Sure. So, um, so, which is, so it, it's a talk fest, yeah. uh, but it's a talk fest with some of the, if, if, if you've probably spoken to a lot of people, but the, the amount of faces you see here, mm. um, I've got to meet some of my um, uh, 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 cultural heroes, I suppose. Yeah. So Peter Bogazian and James Lindsay from Sokol Square, yes, which is yes. just fantastic. Yes. I wish Helen was here, that'd be great. But yeah. she might be, I haven't seen her yet. <laughs> um, I caught up with the trigonometry chaps again and Constantine's yeah. speech today was- Constantine's amazing. Typical Constantine, wasn't yeah. it? So yeah. Um, yeah. that was lovely. So, um, and, and, and a whole bunch of other people. Um, yeah. One of the other reasons I'm here is I'm one of the uh, organisers for and, and, and uh, board members of CPAC Australia. Yep. So I'm literally help, trying to help recruit yeah. um, and spread the word that, hey, we have this thing down in Australia. Yeah. It, it's, it's no arc. It is more political yep. as opposed to a cultural thing. Yep. So uh, trying to get better, better, different talent because yep. we've had... CPAC now three years, yeah. we need fresh talent, essentially. Yeah. So. But I think part of the point of ARC is each of us doing what is within our grasp to do, and CPAC is something that is within your grasp to do, obviously in, in concert with others that, that work with that. I'm, I'm interested, though, in... I'm going to say something that you might take the wrong way, so hopefully hopefully, I'm not about to hijack my own, my own interview. An elite talk fest. That's, that's what, for example, the World Economic Forum is. It's a bunch of elites getting together saying how they should run the world. Here we see a lot of elites up on the stage. Many would regard you, I don't know how you regard yourself, many would regard you as an elite. You've been tremendously successful in business. You have financial resources beyond what most of us have uh, because of Shark Tank and, and your willingness to take a, a front seat in the media space. Now you've got some influence, some public profile and some voice to go along with your, your business success. Uh, and you've got political connections now. You, you're an elite for any practical purpose of, of, of what that, that word may mean. So how does an elite talk fest help the average person? How does this translate down to something that makes a difference in the average person's life? Um, look, I, I, I think um, the term elite is, there's a lot of... You know, there's, there's, there's a, a lot, lot of baggage on the term, and I don't mean it that way. Around. Yeah, no, yeah. and, and I, don't, I don't disagree with what you said. Yeah. So um, I, I would say that the, the pejorative of delete, of, excuse me, of elite, um, or the pejorative use of elite would come in where it, what you do with that elite status are you trying to tell others what to do? Sure. Uh, I would think that most people here would be in the camp of um, trying to get more people left alone. Yeah. So uh, if anything, it's trying to actually to, to free up uh, people to make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I despise the elite when they're basically trying to force their view through collective or government uh, mechanisms yeah. on others. Yeah. Whereas I would say 85% of what I've heard here so far is yeah, aside from some monopoly stuff and there's some you know some wonky commercial stuff but yeah. for the most part it's hey we need we need to uh, uh, disentangle the regulations and disentangle the political and power structures mm. to leave people alone mm. so you know if, if, if someone is an elite basically saying we should have less control over people's lives it's not a pejorative anymore that's yeah. for sure so yeah. <laughs> yeah so from your perspective 
what, what are the outcomes that we that, that we can hope to see in the next six months? Obviously, this is the launch event. It's a three-day event. We're not going to suddenly see the world change in three days. But what should the average person be looking for and hoping to see over the coming months and the coming years that would be evidence that ARC is working, that it's succeeding at something? Um, I don't know, okay. but I, I, I know what we can take out of it and I think how we can start to uh, redress. Because it's up to everyone to under... Everyone probably has a different perspective on what the deficiency, the problem is and the deficiency sure. is at the same sure. time. Uh, as I said before, that, that you, you get to engage a lot of people here to be able to fortify uh, yourself and your argument mm -hmm. and, and to maybe to change your argument at the same time. Sure. So um, I don't think talk face ever really hurt. Yeah. Uh, and one of the debates I was having last night, one of you as well, but uh, over, a, might have been a few wines last night at the function, <laughs> but it was about... How do we stop this from becoming a, uh, a, a, a centre or a right wing uh, echo chamber? Yeah. We got well, do we regard Davos or the WF as a left wing echo chamber? I said, so my answer would be, so what? We're just yeah. balancing things out. Yeah. So um, I think you need to keep those opinions fresh and you need to introduce some uh, aggravation into these things to make okay. sure that we are actually being challenged on yeah. ideas. Iron um, sharpens iron. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So um, I never heard that before, but I understand it. That's, yeah. that's, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, so I, I don't mind it becoming that. I mean, we, we need a counterbalance there. If it gets big enough um, that you know we can have just more than one news, one traditional news organisation yeah. covering it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the 75, 80 percent coverage of mainstream media against things like art. Mm. If we can turn that to 50-50, then mm. the balance will be returned to the world to some yeah. degree. So once again, it's confidence, I think. Well, you spoke at the very beginning of our interview about the confidence to tell our story and the confidence to, to sort of put ourselves out there in that way. Uh, and if you're not being attacked, maybe you're not being loud enough. The, the whole theme of ARC is a better story. What went wrong with the story we had? Why do we need a better one? What happened? We've got to tell it. We, uh, I think you've seen this now with the, with the schools and the history. I think you've seen the, the disgraceful stuff with the uh, Bruce Pascoe in Australia and rewriting mm -hmm. the history of Australia, which is just dreadful. Dark Emu being Dark the, Emu, the, yeah, the book, yeah, yeah. So, um, and, and we took our eyes off that as well, not you know, it, because I think that the, 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 the personality makeup of a conservative or a conservative or more right-leaning person, yeah. they're willing to let things go for a while. So, sure. um, whereas the other side that we tend to do cultural battle with, won't. They'll, they'll, they'll pursue it. They'll yeah. they, I think it's Margaret Thatcher's ratchet. It's the term for the ratchet, <laughs> yeah. the ratchet of the left. Yeah. Um, and so we let it go for a little too long, and then all of a sudden um, we wake up and, you know, it's the whole head you go bankrupt. Mm. Yeah. Gradually, then suddenly. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden, and then I've known that saying for a while, I and mean, it appeared in the papers in Australia recently as well. So it's, yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to steal it, I'm, borrow, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, using that with, with full attribution, I hope. So um, I think it was Hemingway. Um, I think that's quite, originally, originally yeah. who it was, yes. Yeah. So, um, but it's true, so we said, oh, okay, 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 the running right on universities, oh, okay, it's a silly book in the library about, about Aboriginals building grain silos, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> um, um, and the reason I laugh at that is because until 10 years ago, that didn't happen, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm allowed to laugh at things that are blatantly bullshit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, and we took our eye off it, thinking it wasn't going to matter, then all of a sudden, how did we get here? Okay, so, so what was the all of a sudden? Something has to be the catalyst for people to realise that there's a problem. Um, you know, what was it? Was it COVID? Was, it, was there some other factor at play? Or was it just because things got so Well, for far? me, for yeah. me. Well, oh, well my, my, my journey started in 2016 and started in this city. Okay. Um, so I used to run an outbound entrepreneur program called Startup Catalyst. Okay. We used to send mostly young people around the world. Uh, to do outbound entrepreneurial transformation. It was all privately, most part privately funded. Yeah. Um, we sent a delegation to, I think it was London Tech Week, uh, which is a big investor technical festival type thing. And um, uh, we had a briefing from someone inside of DFAT before saying, we always had briefings when we sent people overseas. And they yeah. said, oh, you know, there's an election going on in the UK and in Brexit. And we're like, yeah, but it's the UK, man. They yeah. do they do elections yeah. well. Magna yeah. Carta, what's, you know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all good, right? <laughs> and then that week, they were here, and then obviously, oh my, oh my God, they, they voted to leave. Because I just assumed, because the, me, the, the media were saying they were going to stay in Brexit, uh, in, yeah. in, excuse me, in, in, uh, in, in the, the EU, EU. Yeah. it had happened. And then, uh, so I rang up the mission leader and Aaron, he said, oh no, it's, you know, it's a bit of a party atmosphere. Everyone's a bit shocked, but everyone's just getting on with it. Yeah. No, 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 see you next week, <laughs> type thing. 
And then I watched this slowly unpicking of the result. They were trying to have a new election or mm. everyone was wrong and they were dumb. And I thought, mm. and I, I, I literally thought they were going to overturn the Brexit vote. Yeah. And I thought if they can do that in the home of the Magna Carta, yeah. by Christ, they can do that in Australia. Yeah. And so at that point, I started reaching out and getting a lot more active. And then the, the Trump phenomenon happened at the same time. Yeah. Or soon after, excuse me. Um, and then, and then for me, it was like, okay, so how do we, how do I, I could see it coming to Australia. So I started backing content creators all around the world mm -hmm. um, and, and just uh, going to different events. And go, yeah. okay, so, you know, if, if we can, for example, so I back a lot of English content creators. Yeah. So if we can stop this rot here, yeah. we won't have to fight it as badly in Australia. Yeah. So, uh, so for me, it was Brexit um, yeah. and just the absolute, yeah, th just the, the reaction to that. Not, not dissimilar to the reaction to the voice, right, at the moment. Well, I, th there were parallels that I was thinking about as you, as you were telling me that story. So, um, look, but there, there are other people that need to be interviewed, and I want to I, I say yes to everybody. So, Steve, you've been very, very generous with your time, and I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for being here at ARC. Thank you for talking to us here Thanks at the Aussie Wire. Always and good to we'll see you, talk folks. to you again. Right, cheers, mate. Cheers.